guys, welcome back to Miss Henderson's Kitchen. Um, my name is Kayla Henderson. I am a high school culinary arts teacher in the Independent School District, and we are doing virtual lessons because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And so this is lesson number three for my students. Um, I thought that it would be really fun to show you guys how to make one of my favorite recipes. They are springtime crinkle cookies. Look how fun those look. Lots of different colors to choose from. Um, the unit we would have been working on in class was chapter 29, all about cakes, cookies, and different desserts. So we're gonna get started with this recipe today. Uh, my apron is on, hair is up, hands have just been washed, and we're gonna get going, okay? So first things first when you're making a cookie recipe. Most recipes call for butter, it needs to be softened. So make sure that you take your sticks of butter out of the fridge, with about 30 minutes to an hour prior to beginning the recipe so that your butter is nice and softened and ready to be mixed, okay? So we've got our KitchenAid mixer here. All of my supplies and ingredients are out and all of my um, ingredients have been properly measured. So it just makes for really easy, quick, fast going at our recipe, okay? So we're gonna start by adding two sticks of softened butter to our KitchenAid mixer. And I've got the paddle attachment on. All right, so two sticks of butter equals one cup, okay? Every stick is a half cup, so we needed a full cup for this recipe, two sticks of butter, okay? All right, then we're going to get our granulated sugar measured out. We need two cups of granulated sugar, and then we're going to cream our butter and our sugar together. It's called the cream method. Um, that's not gonna fit in there, so we're gonna pour. Guys, make sure that we are using dry measuring cups for our dry goods and liquid for liquid. Remember when we want to use the correct tool in the right way. All right, that's one cup. All right, this recipe is really quick and easy. It takes about 10 minutes to pull together, but your dough has to rest in the fridge for two hours. So make sure you give yourself plenty of time for this recipe. two cups of sugar and then we're gonna get the mixer going like I said this is just called creamy okay you're just blending the butter and the sugar together until it creates a really nice consistency So when everything looks combined, I'm gonna take my rubber spatula and just wipe it on the sides. Make sure you get all of that good, yummy butter and sugar mixture properly incorporated. And it should look something like this, like a yellow paste. Okay, it almost looks like dough itself, but not quite there yet. All right, so that is step number one. We have that all well combined. The next step is to add the eggs. I've already cracked four eggs, okay? You wanna crack them in a bowl separate from your KitchenAid mixing bowl, just in case you get any shell when you crack them, okay? So we're gonna pour those in while the mix is going. And try to just get one egg in at a time, let it go. Awesome. You kind of see there the mixer. All right, next step. Uh, what makes these cookies really, really yummy is it's got lemon zest and lemon juice. It just kind of pops that um, all the flavors come together and really just add a brightness to these cookies. And so that's why I love them so much. Um, in order to zest your lemon, you need something called a microblade. Let's see if I've got one. Find it out. Here we go. All right. So this is your microblade, and it just gets the outer peel of your lemon 
um, off, of, off of the actual limit itself, okay? So that's always handy. So we've got four tablespoons of lemon zest. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. Uh, four tablespoons of zest is gonna be about six to eight lemons, just depending on how big your lemons are. So it kind of takes a while to get all that zest off, so have some patience with yourself. Um, and then also takes four tablespoons or a quarter cup of juice. I'm gonna pour that in. Don't go too fast because your juice will go everywhere. Like one of my favorite scents. It just smells so good and definitely reminds me of springtime. So that's why these are springtime maple cookies. All right, so we have our juice, we have our lemon in. We're going to throw in four teaspoons of baking powder. I'm going to start slow. step is the flour. Okay, you're going to use four and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So I'm going to, thankfully my container here has this nifty little scraper on it. So we're just going to do um, about a third at a time. Okay, so I've got one cup here, so I'm going to go ahead and throw that in. Remember, you want to go slow with this. At this point, it might be a good idea to lift your mixer and get everything pushed down and scraped off the sides. Remember, we want everything well incorporated. All right. All right. That was cup two. Cup number three. Well mixed, and we'll be ready for the next step. Maybe one more swipe down my side, get all of that flour well incorporated. One final mix, and then we'll be ready for the next part. All right, this looks awesome. All right, I like that. So this is what your dough should look like when everything has come together. And that was really quick and easy. Like that took, you know, five minutes, less than 10 for sure to come together. So really easy dough, you probably have most everything on hand. What makes these cookies so fun though, is that you can make different colors. So what we're gonna do is we're going to divide the batter up into four equal portions and get some food coloring mixed in. So I've got, I'm using, I think it's Wilton, gel food coloring, okay? so. You can use any colors you want. If you don't have these you know, particular colors on hand, that's fine. You can make them red, green, blue, 
whatever. I picked these colors because they're more springy colors. So I've got purple, magenta, teal, and orange. So that's what we're gonna go for today with our cookies. I've got four different bowls. I'm gonna divide up this batter into so that we can get our different colors mixed in. Make sure you get all that dough off the paddle. Don't wanna leave anything behind. All right, so like I said, just kind of eyeball it, four equal portions. This recipe makes about 32 cookies. So if we've got four colors, should be able to get about eight cookies with each color. And you don't have to do four colors. You can divide the batter in half and do two colors. You can do the whole batch one color. I just think that this makes it really fun. And my mom and I are gonna go out later and take these to my nieces and nephews. So I know that they will definitely love all the different colors, and I can just see them now going, I want the blue ones. That would be Jude, my oldest nephew. And I can see Maxwell, my niece, going, the pink ones are all mine. So you can kind of tailor it to maybe you're making the cookies for a big party, and you need certain colors, or you know people are going to be there who enjoy certain colors. So have fun with this one. All right, this looks about even. All right, I'm gonna get it cleaned up a little bit, get my hands washed so that I can effectively show you guys how to do this, this next part. So I'll be right back. Okay, so hands have been washed again, station's kind of cleaned up. So we're ready to do the most fun part of these cookies. Okay, so I've got, like I said, all of my batter equally distributed in four separate bowls. Um, remember with your food coloring, you can always add more color, but you cannot take it away. So start small. I'm always trying to remind my students of that when we're doing baking and using food coloring that, or, you know, or, or salt, anything, any ingredient on a recipe. You can always add more, but you can't take it away. So start small and then go from there. Um, so I've got, I think this is a teal. This should be really pretty. So I'm gonna start with, I don't know, we'll say four drops. Give it a mix and see where that gets me. Mm, definitely teal. Look at that. Ooh. I just know my nephew Jude is going to absolutely love seeing blue cookies. It's his favorite color. Make sure you get that food coloring really well incorporated in there. It may even be easier to use a handheld mixer to do that. Just don't want to see any white dough left. All right, I think I'm going to make that a little more blue. We're going to go let's go to three more drops. Color does kind of fade when it's cooked. So you always want them to look a little bit more vibrant than you think it should look. It's like I said, some of that color will definitely fade. All right, I think that is a pretty awesome looking blue, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this mixed together. I got my orange, my pink, and my purple left to do, and I will be right back to show you guys what these look like. Okay, so I have all of my colors mixed, and look how vibrant they are, okay? So excited to show you guys how to finish these off, but they gotta go into the fridge for two hours. So I'm gonna cover with some either plaster wrap, I've got some aluminum foil here, Get them in the fridge, get them chilled, and then I'll be back in two hours to show you guys how to finish these off. Okay, 
Hey everyone, I'm back. So it's been about two hours. Our dough has been chilling in the fridge for about that long, so it's nice and firm. The next part of this recipe is you're going to take um, maybe like a melon ball or a scoop about this size, um, a little bit smaller than an ice cream scoop, and you're going to roll each of the um, dough into balls. And then you're going to roll those balls into powdered sugar. So that's why this recipe is so fun. It looks so cute when they come out because um, what will happen in the oven is that the powdered sugar will crack. And that's why these are called crinkle cookies. So you'll be able to see that bright color coming through, but you also have a really fun crackly design on top. So I'm going to go ahead and get all of our different um, doughs rolled and into the powdered sugar and then um, put them on a greased cookie sheet or you can line it with some parchment paper. So I didn't have any parchment paper on hand so I just used some cooking spray. So I will be back with you guys in just a minute. All right, so I have all of my cookies rolled in powdered sugar and ready to go into a 350 degree oven for about eight to 10 minutes, just depending on the temperature of your oven. So make sure that you keep an eye on them, but I can't wait to show you guys what these look like once they come out. So I'll be back in about 10 minutes. All right, so our cookies are out of the oven. They baked for about 12 minutes, so a little longer than I thought maybe, um, but look how awesome they look. And you can see that they're all crinkly and cracked on top because of that powdered sugar. You definitely want to roll those um, dough balls in completely cover them in powdered sugar to achieve this crackle effect. But I love the color. It smells like lemon and sugar. It smells so good in here. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this springtime crinkle cookie recipe. Please, students, give it a try. I would love to be back in our kitchens at school making these with you at Van Horn, uh, but that's just not a possibility right now. But I would love to see you guys give this recipe a shot in your kitchens, tape yourself doing it, um, take pictures of yourself, send them to your culinary teachers. We would really just love to see you guys busy um, at work making all of these recipes we are putting on um, online for you. So anyway, have a great day, and I will see you guys next time.